Hello, today we'll be talking about the uh, mathematics paper from IGCSC with the code 0580 and this paper is the May June 2021 with uh, variant 1. So this paper is 1 hour and 30 minutes long. We'll be going through the entire paper but splitting it into two parts. So the first question we begin is uh, has to do with uh, rotational symmetry of a shape. So the fi figure given here is a square with four boxes uh four boxes in black shaded so uh, the rotational symmetry means when you uh, rotate the shape around in a full circle so 360 degrees how many times it can uh, the exact same shape repeats itself so that's confusing if we look at the uh, diagram here and if we Let's say if we rotate it around 360 degrees. We rotate it around, let's say, uh, one full circle. You can quickly notice that actually, when you rotate it 90 degrees, it, uh, the same shape appears. 90 degrees again, the same shape uh, appears. And 90 degrees again, the same shape um, appears. It's the exact same shape four times in a row uh, around a full circle. So that, that tells you that the order of rotational symmetry is 4. So that's quite simple here. And they ask you to draw the lines of symmetry. Now you're going to look at where uh, symmetry is during rotation. And you can quickly see that actually the diagonal lines here are the ones that are symmetrical. Because when you rotate it 90 degrees, the same shape uh, appears. I probably should draw it more accurately. But it should be the diagonal lines since the shape is symmetrical along these lines. And we should make sense, I guess, if you look at the uh, shape over and again. And they are, both, they are all symmetrical in along those lines. And also along the axis right here. So if you look at each individual shape, they are all symmetrical to each other. So that's all the lines of symmetry there. Now we're going to go on to the next part. The probability that the train is late is 0 0.15. Write down the probability that the train is not late. So when when they say the probability that a train is late uh, is 0 0.15, then not will be 1 minus that, right? Because since the probability can only have uh, 1 in maximum, so it's actually the complement uh, of the uh, 0 0.15. So that gives you 0 0.85. So that's your answer, 0 0.85. And then the stem and leaf, next part. The stem and leaf diagram shows the number of hours of that each of the 16 students studied last week. So the stem and leaf diagram actually shows the numbers. So the, the first number on the left side here, the next numbers on the right side. So here, as you can see in the key, 12 represents 1 dash 2 represents 12 hours. So here, one that's 12, that's 15, that's 16, that's 18, etc. So in total, there are 16 numbers here. We ask you to find the median. So the median is, is the middle number. But in this case, uh, you have an even number of people. So it must be the... It must be the the middle numbers averaged so if you look here if you look that there is 16 numbers 12 15 16 18 20 21 21 27 29 32 33 34 35 44 45 and 47 so if you look at the middle number here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 these two numbers are in the middle and so you must average them since we have only uh, the, li the, the list has even numbers so you average them 29 over 22 that's going to be 28 so that's your median the mole is the most uh, prominent number so the one that occurs the most and clearly you can see that 21 occurs the most so that's 21 the range is the uh, the 
difference between the largest and the smallest number. So that's 47 minus, tw minus 12. That's going to be 35. So those are your answers. Now moving on to the next one here. This, this part uh, relates to geometry of parallel lines. Here you have the diagram here shows two parallel lines intersected by two straight lines. So these straight lines are in your parallel geometry uh, understanding called transversals. Uh, transversals. So when they intersect those two parallel lines. So in that uh, geometry, there are a few rules. And here, in here, there is actually only one that needs to be used. Uh, it's quite interesting because you can obviously use many, many uh, uh, rules here, but one is only required. The first part we're going to use is the corresponding angles. You can see that along the transversal, meaning the straight line that intersects the two parallel lines, there is a corresponding angle rule. So 37 degrees here, it corresponds to the B here, B angle here. So that means they are equal. So B is actually 37. Hopefully you can see that. And then you can see here that C is also a corresponding angle. C corresponds with this, this angle here. So that, that means uh, along this parallel line, there are, it's 180 degrees. Um, this angle here, this entire angle is 180 degrees. So to figure out C, you just simply do 180 minus 59 minus 37. That's going to equal to C. And C is, uh, this angle corresponds to this angle, as we can see here. So on that note, you can actually, I'm going to go ahead and On that note, you can figure out C using this calculation. And this comes out as 84. 84 degrees. Perfect. Now, since your triangle, you know these two angles, to figure out A is simple. Just 180 minus and uh, subtract B and C. So 180 minus 37 and minus 84, that's going to be A. And I'm sure you can figure it out. The answer is going to be 59. So now you figure out that these are the correct answers. So next part here is about matrix matrices. So here it's matrix addition and matrix multiplication. So A is matrix addition and B is matrix multiplication. So for addition, you just add the entries uh, uh, like you would normal numbers. So that's essentially 6 plus 8 minus 5 minus 1. That's going to give you 14 and minus 6. So that's your answer there. In matrix multiplication, you take the number and multiply it into both entries here. So that's going to be uh, 3 times minus 4 and 3 times 7. Okay. So it's minus 12 and 21. That's your answer there. Hopefully that's clear. Otherwise, you can slow down and see the explanation again. So now we're going to look at n term sequences. It's a, it asks you to find the first three terms of the sequence. That implies n equals to 1, n equals to 2, n equals to 3. So simply just plug the, num the values into the sequence. So it's going to be 1 squared plus 3, 1. Hopefully that's clear. That's your first term. So that's 4. And then 2 squared plus 3 times 2, that's going to be 10. And then the third sequence is 3 squared plus 3 times 3. So that's going to be 18. So 4, 10, 18. That's your answers. Now hopefully that makes sense. Now they're asking you to find the first five terms, the n term of the sequence. So to do this, you need to look at the differences. So you, you, here you have up to n equals 5, uh, the first 5 terms of a sequence. First, you start with looking at the difference between numbers. 25 minus 18, that's 7. 18 minus 11, that's 7 again. 11, 7, and then 7 here, 2. So clearly, you can see that uh, each time 
each each time you go through the numbers, it's always being subtracted by seven. So that means you must have a minus seven n here. Uh, and to look to to match with the sequence, you just start with uh, taking the first term, minus seven times one. That's minus seven. And to adjust your n term sequence to re to get twenty five here, you need to add some value. So let's call that value here x that needs to be the first term and uh, when you rearrange it it gives you 32 so that's your adjustment factor essentially to your n term sequence so now your sequence should be 32 minus 7 n so indeed that's the number now you can check whether that works you put in n equals to 1 obviously that gives you 25 you put 2 you get 18, you put 3, 11, so everything is right here. So this is your answer. Now, the next part here is solving a simultaneous equation. So, um, if you recall, there are two methods uh, that you can le you learn in IUCSC. That is the substitution and the elimination. So we're going to do, do both of them, uh, just to s see whether... It works, I guess. The first part is the substitution. So we're going to take the second equation. We're going to rearrange it. x equals to 40 plus 5y to number 2. And we're going to substitute back to number 1. So put it into number 1. 2 times 40 plus 5y uh, plus y equals to 3. And then we're going to expand. So 80 plus 10y plus y equals to 3, then 11y equals to minus 77. So you get y equals to minus 7. And then put it back, put this number back in here. x equals to 40 uh, minus 35. So that's 5. So you get uh, the pair of numbers as x, y equals to 5 minus 7. Now we're going to look at elimination method. Uh, elimination of these two equations. So 2x plus y equals 3x minus 5y equals to 40. Let's see what we can eliminate easier. We can see that if you multiply 2 here into this number, second equation, you get 2x and that then you can eliminate this. So let's see how that works. So 2 multiplied by 2, the equation 2. That's going to yield 2x minus 10y equals to 80. Subtract it from number 1. Or oh, sorry, 1 minus 2. It's going to give you 11y equals to minus 77. These two cancel. And y minus minus 10y is plus, so 11y. 3 minus 80, that's minus 77. Okay. So y equals to minus 7. Now we can put it back in. Let's say let's put it back into equation two. X equals to forty plus five y. And of course, it's the exact same thing as number one. You put it in, you get five. So with both methods, you can get the answer. That's five and minus seven. So those are your answers. You can try to put it substitute back in to the equation one and two. And you'll find that these are the correct answers. Now look, let's look at number 8. It says here, without using a calculator, work out 1 and 3 eighths minus 5 6. You must show all your working and give your answer as a fraction in simplest form. So let's start by working out each individual fraction first. And put it into the standard form that most people are familiar with. So 1 and 3 eighths, that's essentially 8 eighths, that's 1, plus 3 eighths. So this gives you uh, 11 on 8. Now let's look at 5, 6. There's nothing you can do here now. Uh, with these, now you're going to combine them. So 11 eighths minus 5 on 6. Uh, to do this, you need to find the common denominator. 
and an easy way to do that is just multiply it uh, by the denominator so this this fraction multiply it by 6 on both the numerator and the denominator minus 5 then this one times 5 times 8 over 6 times 8 that gives you, that yields you the same denominator in the bottom so that's going to be 66 minus 40 over 48 so that's 26 over 48 and they want you to give it in simplest form and an easy simple form here is just divide it by 2 because they they have a common factor so that's 13 over 24 and that actually is the simplest form that you can get and this is your answer okay and that's the all, all the three marks that you can get now let's look at 9 a is the point 5 minus 5 b is the point 9 3 so let's here find the coordinates of a b uh, midpoint of a b so let's call the midpoint uh, x dash and use the formula shall we so uh, y dash the formula is taking the x x the two points uh, x coordinate and then add them add them up and divide by two the same thing you should do for y uh, the midpoint so that's 5 plus 9 over 2 that's going to give you a 7 a 14 over 2 7 um, it's going to give you 7 and then minus 5 plus 3 that's 2 over 2 that's minus 1 so that's your midpoint ok should be easy enough this is correct ask you to find the length of AB so that's the distance the closest distance between the two points so let's draw it out and see uh, exactly how that would look like for you know uh, to better see the problem so you have here the XY plane and let's right here 5 and then minus 5 your point is here for a and b is 9 and 3 so somewhere here 9 3 so that's about here so that's b and you want to find the length a b so you need to use actually Pythagoras uh, Pythagorean theorem to find the closest distance between them and that's the distance formula so uh, the square root of uh, x2 minus x1 so that's 9 minus 5 squared plus the y2 minus y1 so 3 minus minus 5 that's going to be plus squared so 4 squared plus 8 squared and you put it into a calculator that's going to give you something like uh, 8.94 so that's your answer here and we're gonna uh, split this into two parts so the next part will continue with the other uh, 10 more questions thank you